Today I'm going to be turning this character design into a 3D model, but not just any 3D model. We're going to make it look exactly like the reference image, so that from all angles it looks like a 2D drawing. I always start off my models in the exact same way, and that's by bringing in my adjustable mannequin. You can find a link to it in the description, but I made it for myself to allow me to easily change the model's proportions so that I can start sculpting and modeling more quickly. To make my life easier, I always match the camera resolution to the resolution of the reference image, and this allows me to then view the reference image from the camera so I can start lining up the mannequin. Sometimes I'll play with the focal length of the camera if I see that the image looks very flat or has a lot of depth, but for this one the default settings worked out perfectly. At this point, all I'm doing is pushing and pulling the mannequin around until it matches the reference pose. There's really nothing fancy happening yet. I'm just trying to get the model to line up with the image, and keeping in mind that this is a 3D model, I'm always checking it from every angle to make sure that the model flows nicely. Sometimes when modeling things from a single reference image, they end up looking flat because you become so focused on making it look correct from one angle that you forget that the model has to exist in 3D space, so it needs to look good from all angles. This process usually only takes about 10 minutes, and once the mannequin is roughly in place, I can start sculpting to refine some more details. So I can remesh the model, and then I can start smoothing it out to remove all of the joints and seam lines, and I can easily do this with the inflate and smooth brushes. I smooth out everything until the joints disappear, and then I use the inflate brush to fill the area back in until it becomes relatively smooth. After that I can do some basic sculpting with the clay strips brush to build up the forms. Sculpting isn't one of my strengths, so I'll just roughly get all of the muscle shapes and anatomical details in place, and then later I'll be refining this with retopology. There are some amazing sculptors out there who can turn a model like this into a finished piece, but that's not something I can do. My sculpts always end up looking pretty bad, but I know that I can fix it with modeling. For the clothes, I draw a mask and then use the mask extract tool, which separates the masked area into its own object. Then I can sculpt until it matches the image. What I'm doing here is called the block out phase. So all I'm doing is blocking out all of the major shapes and landmarks, making sure that I have all of the different parts of the character in place. It also helps to apply some materials to the different parts to get a feel for the proportions and how the lighting affects different areas. If the model looks good with some simple materials, you know you're on the right track. The last thing I do is refine the face and add in some spheres for eyes. Again, at this point, all I'm trying to do is roughly get things in place. Adding in the eyeballs really helps with getting the proportions of the face correct. You'll see that I have to make some adjustments to make sure that the eyes fit, but in the end it makes for a better and more anatomically correct model. Once everything is in place and lined up with the image, I need to start remodeling everything and the easiest way to do that is to get the character into a neutral pose. I need to rig the character and essentially break the model until it's standing roughly in an A pose. The A or T pose is the most neutral pose because the arms and legs are away from the body, allowing us to model easier. In most cases you would probably model the character in a T pose from the very beginning, but because I'm just working from one reference image, I have to make the character in the pose, then get them into a T pose. If this character had a model sheet, then I could start from a T-pose, but I'm limited to one image, so that's why I have to model the character in the final pose first. Once that's done, I can start the process of retopology. The faces of your character and how they flow are generally referred to as the topology, so retopology means we're just remaking the model, but this time we can make sure that things are more optimized and flow nicely. The main reason for retopology is to reduce the number of faces on the mesh. The fewer faces a model has, the faster it can be rendered, it can be textured easier, and it will be easier to animate. For my retopology, I try to keep it as simple as possible. I put a circle with 8 vertices around all of the major landmarks of the body, so the armpits, elbows, eyes, ears, neck, and from here, I know that all of these pieces should connect together because they have the same number of vertices. It's just a big puzzle. You have loops around the eyes and mouth, and then you just have to connect them in a logical way. There are guides that you can use for retopology, but once you do it enough, it becomes second nature, and eventually you'll learn how to break the rules of topology, like right here. Modeling hands is a pain, so I can just steal these hands from an old model and attach them to the new one. However, you'll see that we end up with some triangles when connecting the hand. This would worry a lot of beginners, because most modeling tutorials tell you to keep everything as quads and the triangles are bad, and in some cases that's true, but it all depends on the use case. Sometimes the retopology just doesn't work out, so you can use triangles to reduce the edge count so that areas join together. You could easily hide some triangles under your character's hair or underneath clothes. As long as the areas with triangles don't deform too much, you can get away with it. And in this case, this is basically a statue. It's not going to be a playable character in a game or animated in any way, so having a few triangles here and there won't matter too much. Once the retopology for the body is finished, I can start to do a bit of work on the material. This effect is pretty cool and it's a pretty basic setup. All I'm using is an image of stars, and this is projected from the camera view, so that whenever we rotate around the character, the image will always stay in the same place. 
This is fairly simple, but it allows me to really see what the character is going to look like when it's finished. I also want to get the blue outlined around the character, so using the solidify modifier and a backface culling material, we can create an outline, but I don't want the outline everywhere. It only shows up around the head, hands and hips, so I can use a vertex group to control where it shows up. All of the red areas will have the outline and the blue areas won't. So now I can really get a sense for what the character is going to look like. At this point, I can just complete the rest of the retopology for the clothes, following the exact same process of putting eight vertices around the major landmarks of the mesh and then just connecting them in a way that makes sense. With the whole character pretty much in place, I can start working on the final galaxy material. I wanted to get a bit fancier with this by having depth to the stars by giving it some parallax. I won't explain exactly how this works, but the main concept is that we're taking the camera projection technique that I described earlier, but instead of having it static to the camera, we can do a bit of math, so when we rotate the camera, the projected image actually moves. And then by using multiple images that all move different amounts, we can give the illusion that the different images are in front or behind one another. Another cool thing I'm doing here is using vertex groups as masks. In the reference image, I can see that the constellation only shows up across the hips, so I can paint a black and white mask using vertex groups and then use this mask to only allow the constellation to show up on the hips. I also use this same vertex group mask technique to remove the stars from the face. At this point, I can start posing the character to match the reference again. This is exactly the same as the process I did at the beginning with the mannequin. All I'm doing is posing the character to match the reference, and because I did all of this work at the beginning, you'll see me toggling on and off the mannequin to see where certain parts of the body should be. At this stage, the model looks pretty nice, but we can take it one step further by adjusting the model to match the reference image exactly. This is the step that takes a model from looking good to looking great. Concept artists spend so much time making specific decisions about a character, and we need to honor those decisions and match them in 3D. Sometimes you'll hear the term off model and on model, and these basically ask the question, does your character look like the character in every situation? On model sheets, you'll see certain rules laid out by the concept artist, whether it's certain shapes to stick with or expressions that the character can and can't make. And as 3D artists, we also need to abide by these rules. So that's what this step is. I'm taking this model from a good looking model to a model that actually looks like the character. I hope that you can see here that it makes a big difference. The adjusted version looks a lot more dynamic and the shapes are a lot more appealing. The last thing to do now is to add line art. I have a full line art video explaining all of the methods, but I'm mostly using freestyle for the outlines around the clothes. Freestyle allows me to control the color of the lines, which is a lot more difficult using the other methods. So I can pick out certain lines, like the seam around the shoulders and the creases in the hood, and draw lines along these edges. I also then project the texture from the shirt onto the model by using a separate UV map. I have a regular UV map and one that I projected from the camera view. You can then use the clone brush in texture paint mode to copy the texture from the projected UV map to the real UV map. And then with a bit of cleanup on the texture, the model is done. I did a small bit of animation to bring it to life a bit, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. I love the character design and I love how the galaxy material turned out. I've uploaded a separate time-lapse video, so if you want to watch that, go ahead and check it out. But I hope you enjoyed this process video and thanks for watching.